What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of The Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think of today's live discussion in the comment section below. If you're watching this live, do me a favor, make yourself known in the chat, say hello and ask a question. If you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet, or you're living under a rock and seeing this video for the first time, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video what's up ladies and gentlemen we are here live on a thursday i told you guys i'm gonna try to do a weekly live every thursday or friday and here we are did pretty well last week it's not often uh that a live show gets ten thousand plus views i try to shoot for that last week we were able to get there so it's nice to add to the arsenal and do some lives uh as usual we got a new show on saturday gambino crime family time we're going to talk about a pretty new gangster, a guy that um, you know is not on the streets anymore, uh, but a guy that was involved really in the 2000s and the 2010, uh, and he was actually involved in Mafia Takedown there, and we're going to talk more about him on Saturday. Next week, got another new episode as well on Tuesday, Wednesday-ish, so a lot coming up here on the show. Always appreciate every one of you that's here. Already 105 people in here, just a minute in. And I want to talk today about Jimmy Calandra. Um, and I know anytime, sadly on YouTube, anytime somebody else includes another content creator in their title, people think you're going to talk shit on them. That's not how I do things. I look for genuine discussion. And um, I heard something Jimmy said recently, and I was pretty astounded by it. And I want to talk a little bit more about it. Um, as I've always said to Jimmy, I'd love to have him on the show at any time. You know, we had at one point scheduled a time to do an interview. Um, it didn't end up working out. Um, I call Jimmy regularly, try to get him on. Um, I really want to hear more about his life and about his life with the Bath Avenue crew and connection to the Bonanno crime family. There's been a lot of hay made in the last year or so about some of his counterparts, Fabrizio DiFranzisi, who just got out, Tommy Reynolds, who's going to get out very soon. We've seen Joey Calco pop up over the years, Chris Pacciello. So Jimmy's a pretty interesting character. And, you know, I know Jimmy's guy that has definitely went a different way, I think, than a lot of the creators on YouTube, right? Um, Jimmy's definitely made no bones about it. He's willing to defend himself. And, you know, I respect that. Everybody should uh, defend and respect themselves. Um, but we'll talk about him in just a second. Thanks for watching, guys. 145 people. If you have a question or a comment, please say hello in the chat. Uh, it's always appreciative. You know, anytime we can do a live and we get participation, that means everything. That makes the lives go great. And uh, I really enjoyed last week's show. So let's say hello to a couple of folks here. Luigi Buscaglia says, what's going on? What's up, Luigi? I believe you are live from Italia, the motherland. Where are you from in Italy, Luigi? Uh, como stai? Um, a Evan, APW. I don't know what that means, but thanks for watching, brother. Florida attorney. What's going on, Florida attorney? How you doing, man? Uh, Maceo, another great topic. What up, Maceo? Yes, always. Always enjoy that uh, that avatar. I know I always mention it. That is a very funny avatar. Um, are you sure he was an associate or ran around from people with Bath Avenue? A big difference. I don't think it's a big difference at all. <laughs> I think it's pretty standard, Alan Blue. Uh, if you were associated in under a mobster, you're an associate. It's very simple. Uh, I don't think anybody's made any bones about it. The Bath Avenue crew is very much associates of not only Anthony Spiro, but uh, people like Tony Graziano and others in the Bonanno crime family, Joe Benanti. I don't think that's even a question, uh, Alan Blue. I, look, I get, Alan, that some of you folks don't want to give these individuals the credit, but um, there's a difference between being someone who is just running the street, stealing shit. You know, like Vincent Bickelman is a thief and he's not an associate. An associate is someone who is someone that is under a mafia group either a soldier or someone higher. I don't think it's any question that the Bath Avenue crew were associates of the mafia. It's very simple to understand. Um, there, there's really no, I think, preamble needed, really. Um, David BMX says, I agree. Um, but yeah, again, you're, you're putting your opinion in on it, which isn't what we're talking about here. It's what, what fact is. Um, I always try to, regardless of whether, you know, I think the, inter the, the person's interesting or whatever, um, there's a difference between people like Jimmy and Michael and Sammy and Scars and Gene and Dom and John A. Light and all the people like Anthony Raimondi and Derek Alanis and Danny Trio. There's a stark difference between those guys, and we've talked about that. 
Scott Dunn, how are you? Uh, Jeff Dundon, John DeGrazia, what's up? Nick Raber, always lit, fam, always lit. What up? Uh, Jimmy Light says, F work, I'm here. Uh, well, don't get fired, bro. Uh, hope you and the family are doing well. We're trying to, brother. We're trying to. Um, I uh, just saw my mom yesterday, actually. Uh, we had to do a couple of things. Uh, Joey Frakes, how are you? Uh, Tony Ducks, it's always good to see the boss of the Lu former boss of the Lucchese crime family checking in. How are you? Um, first time watching live from Britain. I'm in Portsmouth. Looking forward to it. John Dace, what's up, John? How are you? Portsmouth, that's a beautiful area. Thomas Jones, always a great day when you catch Jeff live. Exactly. Welcome in, bro. LTB, how are you? Uh, I know some people don't like the, uh, the, the, the the saying hello to people, but I feel like on a live, it's important. Kevin Finnerty. And what I'll do in the description is I'll put where I begin talking about Jimmy. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, ML. Salute to you as well. Uh, Jeff, ask him questions about his Beth Avenue crew, Fabrizio. Uh, well, he's not on, but at some point I will. Um, exposed, how are you? Bill Dukes. What's going on, man? Anthony Orsini says, hit the like button. Jeff is crushing. Oh, I try to. I try to. Already 200 people in here. What up, everybody? By the way, I want to let everybody know. A uh, little programming note. Uh, you see I'm wearing a Nike uh, shirt here. I highly recommend, guys, go checking out the film Air. Very good. I really enjoyed the film. Um, I'm a big Michael Jordan guy, as a lot of you guys know. I used to have Michael in my uh, on my wall. Um, I think Michael Jordan is the greatest athlete in the history of athletes. He's the greatest basketball player ever. And don't forget that. Don't let these new people tell you that LeBron James is better or someone else is better. Look, they're great players. But Michael is Michael. Michael is a cultural icon. He's done more for basketball than anyone ever. Um, and he is someone who must be respected. Always. And I loved the air. I really enjoyed it. I thought there were some things about it that were awesome. I liked that they never showed Michael's face. I think that's super cool. Like, I, I just, I thought Damon was really good. And I like Affleck. I thought Phil Knight, he did a great job. Um, I really enjoyed the film. I really did. Um, and some of that stuff I didn't know. Arazio, how are you? Um, happy to have you here as well. Um, afternoon, how's the homestead? Keep killing it. Everything's great, man. Everything is great. Uh, hit the like. Yes, please. All right, let me get into Jimmy Calandra. Uh, and then we'll we'll say hello to some people. And we'll get to some other things. If you have a comment, please drop it in the chat and we'll get to it. I promise. Um, thank you, Carl. That's super nice of you. Thank you, Carl Adams. Welcome in, man. I try, man. All right. So Jimmy Calandra has done some shows recently. Uh, he did a show the other day and I heard him say something that I was really surprised by. And I don't know if I've heard him say this before. He may have said this before. Um for anyone that doesn't know who Jimmy Calandra is, Jimmy Calandra is an individual that has a show on YouTube. Um, and he was at one point part of a group called the Bath Avenue Crew. Uh, they were out of Bensonhurst, Bath Avenue, and they were essentially a mob farm team. They worked for um, the Bonanno crime family. None of them were made except one. One is now made, and that was after him in prison. Um, there were a group of kids that were friends, and they, they, they sold drugs. They you know, hurt people, they killed people. Um, they were a farm team, just like 20th Avenue, Bay Parkway, Giannini, Tanglewood, uh, all those groups. Now, as customary in a lot of these groups, and we saw this with the Giannini crew, you see several of them go different ways. Some cooperate, some go to prison, some go to prison and continue to be gangsters and become made. And then 20, 30 years down the road, you have several people that are at several levels. Now, the main folks in the Bath Avenue crew that were several, and I'm going to break down quickly who they are. I'm going to do a show at some point on the entire chronological events of the Bath Avenue crew, but this is just for the layman's terms and basing off of what I want to talk about today. Um, all these kids are from Bath Avenue. You had Jimmy Calandra. You had Joey Calco. Joey was a member of the crew. Paulie Galino, Fabrizio DiFranzisi. And um, Paul or uh, Tommy Reynolds. The Reynolds was Irish, half Irish. The rest were Italian. Now they did things like they had numbers on their uh, foot, ankle, to signify their involvement in the group. Uh, ones, two, three, four, five. And they had other people involved: William Galloway, uh, people like that. Anthony, I think the kid Anthony Gonzalez, 
um, Chris Pacciello, a couple others. Um, but essentially what went on is they were all involved with hurting people due to their connection with the Bonanno crime family. The leader of the group, Paul Galino, started kind of you know, operating, doing what he did. It was very tough, very feared individual. At one point, he pushes the boss of the Bonanno crime family, Anthony Spiro, and he's marked for death. Now, what, as we know, and customary in the mafia is they send your friends to kill you. So it's Spiro and the Bananos knew we got to send them to do it. And that's what you do in that life. Calco and uh, several others go to Galino's home and kill him. Ultimately, for the Bath Avenue crew, Tommy Reynolds and DeFrancisi get long prison sentences. DeFrancisi just got out two weeks ago. Reynolds is in until late 2020s. 2028, I believe, just got a reduction. Calco cooperated and is living in Florida and actually assaulted a customer at a pizzeria he owned. Um, he's been in the news. Um, Jimmy is someone that cooperated as well, and he's on YouTube. And then Galino obviously died. Galloway cooperated, as far as I know, uh, and Pacciello cooperated. So they're all on different kind of levels. But what Jimmy said that I found so interesting is he stated that he talked about the day that Paul Galino was killed. Now, at the time, Jimmy was in prison, right? He's locked up. So obviously, he's not going to, to whack Galino. But what I find so crazy is Jimmy stated that if he were on the streets, he would not have killed Galino and that his friends were scumbags for killing their friend. What I don't understand from Jimmy Calandra is, and I, I'm curious at his answer, Jimmy, I'm always fair. I don't, I don't talk shit on anybody. I'm just talking strictly from an intelligent conversation point of view. It's good to have conversation on here. My whole thing is first, how would you say no to them? Weren't you someone that was in the streets and you had to do what your boss told you to do? I think it's crazy to say that you wouldn't kill them and that on one level, they're scumbags are doing it. They were all part of the same life and the same life that you were a part of. And as friends, that's what you have to do in that world. That's why you're in it. If you don't want to kill your friends, I don't think you should be in that world. Now, if you believe genuinely that you wouldn't have killed him, I guess what my thought is, what would have happened to you? You would have been killed. I don't understand. That's where I'm confused by what Jimmy said. I'm fascinated by it. I think it's a great discussion piece. Um, but yeah, he said he wouldn't have killed him. And I guess my thought is, would you have told him to like leave town or like what? I don't think he would have left, first of all. But like, that's pretty customary. Your friends kill you in that world. That's why you can't break rules. And if you feel like you're going to break rules, you probably shouldn't go into that world. But it almost seems like sometimes these guys want to be gangsters, but when it's time to be gangsters, they don't want to be gangsters. And that's my question. And I'm, I, it's a question I would be curious to ask uh, him. Um, and maybe he's addressed it. Maybe I've just missed it. Um, I try to watch shows, but sometimes I'll miss them. Um, what do you guys think about it? I think it's really interesting. Um, uh, Kublai Putinov says, Salam Alaikum, Arab, ma Arab Mafia. Uh, Kublai Putinov, uh, Assalamu alaikum to you, uh, alaikum. Uh, I uh, don't know much about the Arab Mafia, but uh, thank you for watching. Tony Flores, I'm ready for another live. I emailed you, never got back. Yeah, Tony, listen, I, I, I'm not, I, I told you I'm going out to Vegas. I, I, you know, maybe I should respond and let you know that I'll be in touch. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I'm super busy, man, sometimes. I, I'll have to look into it. Um, did you ever consider doing a show on Joe and Gallo? Yes, that's on the that's on the docket here, brother, uh, for sure. Do you got any other mafia movie recommendations? Follow me on TikTok, please. At Sit Down Crime Pod, we'll be putting some more videos out on that stuff. So make sure you follow me on TikTok. Uh, let me guys, let me show you my TikToks. So you guys can uh, go follow me. That would be uh, helpful if you did. I think you'll like the content I'm putting up up there. Uh, check it out. Go follow me on TikTok, please. TikTok. Almost 300 people in here. I love seeing that. Please uh, show some love and say hello to me. Uh, Jack House, how are you? Uh, your channel is great. I always like seeing people from Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, Manhattan, Harlem. I love seeing them say that. 
because not that they're better than anyone else, but again, when someone from like Bensonhurst or, you know, Staten Island or Ozone Park or Howard Beach says, hey, Jeff, your shit is really good. I love that. It's almost like having being a being a great artist and having Van Gogh say some good stuff, man. I love that. Uh, Mona Burgos. How are you? How are you? How are you? Facts are facts. Jimmy was an associate. He absolutely was. I'm, I'm not sure why people don't think he was. Um, whatever Jimmy was, he has good stories. Agreed. Agreed. I think they all have good stories. I mean, I may not, you know, whether it's Jimmy or whoever, I may not like some of the things they've done, you know, and I, I, I think some are different than others. Um, but I don't think to say the, that they shouldn't be on here. Like they're the reason we all do this stuff. And I, I love hearing from them. You know, I, I talk so regularly with uh, Frank Fiorellino and Dom Sakali, uh, Howie Santos, uh, Bill Cotolo. And I, I love the things they can do for me and to provide for me. And I, I think they're such wealth of knowledge, you know, and like I've heard Jimmy tell some really, really cool stories, man. You know, I, th I think he's a fascinating guy. I've, I've always said, you know, what he does to defend himself is his business. I'm just looking from a content creating standpoint to speak to him, you know? And again, I always leave the door open. Um, but you know, he's, he's definitely got stories for sure. And, and they're very interesting. Michael Carucci says, you're the best. Thank you, Carucci. Thank you so much. Tiger town. Uh, what's up, man? How are you? I love the chin photo. Thank you, man. Yeah. The canvas is nice. It was hard. I got rid of the two canvases this week. I, I went and got rid of them yesterday. I sent them out. Um, by the way, yo, it is crazy to ship stuff, the cost of it, like, but it was hard to get rid of that stuff. Um, J money. What's up? Happy. I caught the live. Thanks brother. Appreciate you watching, man. Siobhan, I'm doing well. Barbara says this should be on network TV. Well, that would be cool. Wouldn't it? I, I would love that. I would love that. A lot of people don't know as much as they should know about this life that way. And that life. I was an eighties baby. Yes. Same, same. Uh, Joe, thank you for watching. Joe, do you ever say anything else? You always say the same thing to me. Um, am I that young? I'm not too that young, really. Uh, Paul Sav says Glasgow Celtic. Uh, let me say it in my Scottish accent. Uh, Glasgow Celtic are going for the treble on Saturday. Uh, I, that's a little Australian as well. Glasgow Celtic. Uh, yes, I know they are. By the way, speaking of Scotland, I have a bet today in Scotland. A couple of them, actually. I've Scott or uh, Partick Thistle over one and a half goals, Sav. That shows you how deep I go uh, in this. Um, a meat hook. We're not going to read that on camera. Uh, I don't want to get kicked off here. Uh, what's up, man? How are you? What are we going to say about Jimmy? I got to get down in the comments here. Uh, Sir Sav, salute. Can I do a show about Carmine Sessa? Yes, for sure. For sure. Mike DeBella, my man, twenty dollars. Mike, Mike DeBella. Uh, if you, uh, by the way, guys, if anybody wants to uh, send a cash app, you're welcome to uh, send me a cash app. It gets right to me. Uh, I included my uh, cash app at the beginning of the uh, of the uh, comments here. I, I pinned it as well, I believe. Um, let me uh, let me go up here. I, I want to get to some Jimmy talk. Thank you, Mike. Uh, that, that's so nice, you, Mike. Mike's one of the most giving guys in the world. I, I love Mike. Uh, DeBella, just super nice guy. Uh, who's still in witness protection of rats on YouTube? Uh, none, as far as I know. Uh, if you're on YouTube, you're not in witness protection, I don't believe. Um, uh, I never believed that. I think Jimmy would follow orders, my opinion. Yeah, I I, I think it's, I guess it's co convenient to say that now, but I think, as many of us know, that would be a death sentence to Jimmy. Um and I think for Jimmy, I mean, obviously now maybe his tune has changed a little, but, you know, I think all those guys did what they had to do back then. And, you know, it's not an easy life. But when I look at Calco and, and, and the guys that went and did that, look, I think to be in that world, you can't necessarily be a friend to anyone. I think you're just kind of, you know, associates and colleagues to truly have friends. I mean, you don't see it much, guys. Notice Philadelphia, like that's one family where you have like friends that were from young and they've all stayed loyal to each other because they've never been put in a position. But I think in the heyday, like if they had to do what they had to do, they had to do what they had to do. 
And I think in that world, if you take the, you know, the oath or say you really want to be a part of it, there's really only two ways out, right? And you have to do things that you're not comfortable doing sometimes, but you, in the end, it's a dog eat dog world and you have to protect yourself. And that's for me where I kind of say, well, and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, Pacciello was not Beth Avenue. He was Tanglewood. Uh, I don't want to put your, you know, I'm, I'm really conflicted with you exposed because like, I don't, I don't really have any friends in all this, but I'm not going to put people's names. Like I, that, that's what your opinion is. I don't agree with your name, bro, to be honest. Um, I apologize for putting that up. I, I don't want any beef with those people. Um, no, he was a New Springville guy, uh, but he, he was connected to Bath Avenue as well. Irving Brownstone, associated with someone who has been claimed by another guy, the way Donnie was claimed by Lefty. Jimmy was definitely an associate as claimed by Spiro, then Matty Madonna. Um, but but again, like they're all associates, right, to the mafia. That that's that, And that's well said with, with the Donnie Brasco uh, example, uh, for sure. Jimmy may be dead if he didn't follow orders. Yeah, I think the fact that he was in prison probably surely saved him for sure. Uh, I agree Air was excellent. As a Jordan fan and huge sneakerhead, it was like Ten Commandments. Yeah, uh, what? wow, look at that picture. Yeah, you definitely are, aren't are lying. Uh, Dirty Mike's is a good point. It happens all the time. It's the rule, not the exception. Absolutely. Jimmy was under the impression that he would have told Paulie and they would have teamed up and taken on the boss. Is that what he said? I didn't, I've never heard him say that. Jimmy was under the impression that he would have told Paul. I mean, that's, that's, hey, listen, if that's true, then that's a, an option as well. And that was one of the problems I've always had with Salvi, Testa. The problem and difference here is Salvi was a major guy in that family. Jimmy and Paul Galino were, let's just be real, they were just young associates. So while they were under the tutelage of the mob, it's not like they had any staying power, really. Could they actually do that? Yeah, I guess it's possible. I mean, you know, look at Vito Guzzo. Vito Guzzo shot at people. He shot at a made man, multiple made men. That's, and, and I'll tell you what, if that's true, then that should be celebrated, let's say, where when we're looking at this strictly from mob world terms, if you know, and that's what something RJ Rogers' book says 36 Rules of the Bosses. Look at what John Gotti did. John Gotti seized power by killing the boss. Now, again, John Gotti was very high up as well compared to you know Jimmy and, and Paul Galino. But if the plan was we're going to whack out Spiro, that would have been again probably another death sentence. But look at Vito Guzzo, Vito did it, and nothing happened. Sopranos, a television show. Paulie, uh, or uh, not Paulie, Tony uh, Soprano and Jackie April stuck up a made man's card game. Feach Lamana, look at them. It could have worked out. That could have been really disastrous, too. That's a really interesting point, Orazio. I'm not sure I've ever heard him say that. Uh, I've heard him only say that he wouldn't have did it because they were friends and friends don't do that to each other. What's up, Ty? C. Wiley says, who and what age is the oldest guy ever to get straightened out? Who and what age was the oldest guy ever? Uh, you know, I'm not sure off the top of my head, um, but I'll tell you what, C. Wiley. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll plug O.C. Shorts. O.C. Shorts did a video on that. I know the youngest guys. I don't know the oldest guys, though. O.C. Shorts did a show on that, though. Uh, check that out. Uh, Spiro ran that whole street in Bath Avenue and Tommy P. Pauly G got killed. Not much. If G would have survived, he would have made and high up. I feel like, but he didn't get. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. Um, but we'll never know. All right. Urban Production says Albanian rat. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, he always said that he isn't a rat because he never took an oath. Um. Yeah, and this is where Jimmy and I disagree. I, but you were an associate and had no problem telling people you were a mob associate. But when it's time to be a mob associate, you don't want to be a mob associate. That's my problem here. 
Um, but again, I'm so glad we can have these conversations. This is what this genre needs, in my opinion. So, um, you know, I, 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 I'd love to hear from Jimmy on this. Uh, Rob Fasoli, my man. What's up, Rob? How are you? If you don't listen to your boss, don't you get killed? Absolutely. That's what we, that's what we know. Uh, every rat says an rat. No, they don't. That's not true, Justin B. Uh, I've heard many of them say it, that they are. In fact, I think all of them have. Gene, Michael, Scars, Dom, and a lot of them do. Some of them make excuses and don't want to completely admit it, but you know, we know who they are. But I think most of them are pretty, pretty confident in it. Uh, great live, great content. Thank you, Italian. A uh, ten bucks. How about some more Chicago content? We'll see, man. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to maybe do some more stuff. I, I, I'm already doing a couple of videos a week. Um, I don't want to kind of supplant myself where I'm putting too much content out. Um, but yeah, maybe we will. Um, you know, I, I kind of do what works, and sometimes those videos don't work. But like the reason I say that, Italian gentleman, is I did a show on um, Sam Giancana, Momo. Uh, we talked about, uh, some of the black numbers runners, Teddy Rowe, the Joneses, um, and it didn't do well. Um, I did a video with Frank Calabrese. I thought it would do better. It's just, unfortunately, people just want, you know, content involving New York. Um, but yeah, maybe we will, but we, maybe we'll, we'll get, I've done Al Capone and maybe we'll get in some more. I'm going to do Joey Doves for sure. Um, but maybe we'll get to a point where, you know, if I get enough members only people, I'll start doing people's once you know um but i gotta kind of stick to what i'm doing uh 325 people in here guys hit that like button say hello in the chat i love that you're here this show goes fun when people uh kind of add to it and i'm glad people are enjoying the discussion love the show thanks jordan appreciate you brother um would you be interested in a video on the texas mexican mafia out of san antonio would i be interested in doing one or watching one uh, I, I would definitely be interested in watching one or, or interviewing someone like that, but uh, I don't know if I would do a show it's, itself on it. I'm, I'm more of a someone that does like historical cartel content and stuff, but I, I don't know that I would do Mexican. I, I don't know anything about it, really. Um, Al Lehman says, uh, referring to Jimmy Calandra about him saying he wouldn't kill his friend, I think he's looking through eyes that are 30 years later or may have lost touch with how he actually fought. Exactly, exactly. I think he's you know, saying it from the heart of Jimmy Calandra now, which is a much more mature individual that doesn't think like a kid like he used to. And if that's how he feels, that's true. But I think painting it is that that's how he felt back then. I just don't think that's true. I, I, listen, Jimmy, I, I, I think you know that would be a death sentence. But, you know, it's just really just conjecture. We're just kind of assuming that, you know, again, Jimmy – it's just a discussion point really, but I agree with you in that. I think he's trying to start a new life and he has, and I respect that. Um, I've said before with Jimmy, like I don't like some of the things that he does on here, you know, like taunting people with like the F like, I don't like that sort of thing personally. Um, that said, I look at people like Dominic Korea and I think they're, you know, I think he's a, a he can be a total scumbag. So you know, I get it from both sides from Jimmy. I, I think I think everyone should just worry about themselves a lot of the time. Um, my opinion doesn't mean anything. Like what I say about Jimmy, right and wrong, doesn't mean anything. You know, I'm not, I don't have any personal problems with these people. You know, I don't like their behavior, but doesn't mean that I'm going to tell them what they should and shouldn't do. Um, welcome in, Detroit. What's up, man? Carl Adams, Boise, Idaho, no mob here. No, no, none that I know of. None that I know. Maybe a, a cattle mob or something, uh, something like that. Um, you know, who's? I don't know who Tommy P is. Who's Tommy P? Uh, you've said Tommy P a couple of times. I don't know who Tommy P is. Uh, who's Tommy P? Tommy R, you mean? Tommy Reynolds? Yeah, I, I think that's what you mean, but I'm not sure. Um, home invasions are not cool. Um, no. Who said they were? I think you're putting words in people's mouths. Um, no, absolutely not. And look, let's be real. The murder of Patricia Shemtov is um, arguably one of the most depraved things ever done in the mafia. It's that simple. 
And I'm not going to make excuses for any of those people. They willingly went to a home, or not Patricia Shemtov, Judy Shemtov. I'm thinking of Patricia Capizola, another very depraved act uh, by another scumbag, Anthony Casso. Um, no, I agreed. And I think those guys live with that every single day. That is, again, one of the most sickening things ever done by anyone associated with the mob. Kingsport, Tennessee in the house. What's up, Riddle Me This? How are you? Thank you, Tony Flores. Thank you. Um, listen, guys, if you're going to come in here and just be totally rude, don't come in here. People like you, Boots and Ned Kelly, have some respect, right? <laughs> I know some of you guys don't like these people, but call him his name, okay? Don't call him stupid, stupid names. Look, we've all made these dumb mistakes over the years. Even I have. Um, look, Jimmy did a that, – that karate video is funny. Same as when I fought in – like, it's all funny. Like, I, I'm not, you know – and I'll admit, Jimmy, that I've been redeemed the video you did was funny. I It was. I, I think it was funny. I don't think that was the goal of it, but it was funny, I think. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But, like, calling him, like, names and saying stuff about him, like, I, I'm not going to do. Reaper626, how are you, brother? How are you? BT, what up? How are you? Did Dom or Jimmy ever cross paths? Uh, no, I believe Jimmy's answered that. Um, I believe Jimmy's answered that. And I actually talked to Dom yesterday and he said he didn't know he didn't know Jimmy during their time around. Remember, they were from different areas, Bronx, Brooklyn. Jeff, one of the better ones, do some more hometown stories. Uh regarding who? Or what hometown exactly? A Reaper says nuggets all day. Uh, I already have the nuggets to win the series. Um, so I have a future on them. So uh, I'm going to stick with it. You need to do a TV show. Uh, hey, if I'm presented with one, I'll gladly do it. JJ's review says Jimmy's turned his life around and now has a job and a family. Exactly. And good for him. I think anybody that can turn their life around from a position that they were in to where they are now. And look, I like a lot of these dudes have some sorrow for them. I, I do. I think people like Jimmy, I, I think there's a sadness you can feel towards them. You know, like all of these people did things as kids, young people. And we've all done dumb things as young people where one split decision can affect our lives forever. You get in a car and drive when you shouldn't. You know, you, you take a ride with somebody you shouldn't. You have a gun and you don't think about it and you do something like – Remember, guys, we're all very close to, to making mistakes. Now, I'm not saying that, that I would make the same mistakes as those guys. You have to tread very lightly in life. And I think the decisions these people make, I'm not making excuses. I just, I think it's hard to continue to judge them so many years later. But the fact that Jimmy was able to get out and and he got a job and he has a life and a, and a, and a, and a girl or a wife, I don't know if he does. I know he has a girl. I don't know if it's his wife or not. His kids, he's trying to do better. I wish him the best. I do. Um, that's not to say, though, these people are public facing people. And, and I think speaking about things they say can be interesting, right? Uh, what are your thoughts on Sammy the Bull? I feel like we've talked about that enough vibes. I'm going to kind of not talk about that. Um, I think Sammy's interesting. I found him to be likable. I think there are some things he does that I don't agree with as well. Um, he has rubbed me the wrong way in certain instances. Um, but you know, I, I've spoken to him. He was nice to me for a couple of hours, you know, and gave me an interview. Um, I would like to just speak to him with no kind of cuffs. I mean, you can just kind of speak, speak freely. Um, but, you know, he can't argue with his success. Do you think there are mafiosa out there that could be bigger than Sammy or Michael as content creators? Um, I mean, other than them, Junior, probably. I think Junior got he could. I think Junior would be the biggest. Other than that, no, I don't. I think Joe Messina would probably be on the level of like. I don't think I think he would be bigger like Dom and and like John A. Light, but I don't know at this point. Like he doesn't have the, like the thing about Michael, which which I find so interesting is. I just think 
the ability to build himself the way he has. And he's one of the only people that's really done it. But like the one thing Sammy has is he was connected with the Gotties, very highly connected to the Gotties. Um, and they were the first people to do it. Do I think a Joe Messino interview would do big numbers? Yeah. Do I think he would do big with a channel? Not to the level of them, I don't think. No, I don't. I think the only one that would would be Junior, uh, Junior Gotti. Which, you know, again, if Junior's left that life behind him, I don't understand why he doesn't do it. But that's just me. And as someone that that that's worked in media for a while, I feel like I can kind of gauge whether someone will have uber level success like Michael or or Sammy, you know, or, or what. But if I were like Joe Messino, like I would go to like someone and, and, and like say, hey, I'm going to give a year on this. I'm going to create a channel. This is what I would do. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you the blueprint of what I would do. If I were Joe Messino, I would say, OK, I have I'm let's say 80 years old. I think Joey's around 80. I don't know what his mental capabilities are at this point. We don't know anything about Joe Messino, any of these guys that are in the shadows. And I talked about Frank Joya doing it. You know, if I'm any of these guys. I would say, okay, I'm going to gauge who I am. So if I'm Joey Messina, I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to hire some young kids. I'm going to hire two, three people, get some funding and hire people and put this together. I'm going to get a channel. I'm going to create three or four videos. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to find a host. I'm not saying me, but someone like me, like Michael Scars did, finding an RJ, right? Find someone like that that can drive a conversation and in a 30 minute interview, you only have to talk for 15 minutes opposed to the whole video. So the content lasts longer. So I'm going to create the channel. I'm going to do videos and I'm going to get 60, 70, 80, 100 K views on these videos. And then two, three weeks into it, I'm going to go to Bet David and I'm going to say, Patrick, my name is Joe Messino. I was the former boss of the Bonanno crime family and I cooperated with the federal government. I was the first boss ever to cooperate. And I want to tell my story to you. What do you, can you do for me? And he's going to respond. You're just going to say, okay, here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you this amount of money and I'm going to give you this platform. And I'm going to say, beautiful. I'm in. Get me there. We'll do it. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that money. Let's say I get 10 K hypothetically. I'm going to take that 10 K and put it right back into the show because I'm Joe Messino, regardless of where I am, I'm going to be further ahead than I am now. Now I'm not going to make money right away but I'm going to put my money into this. Joe Messino could do pretty well. I don't think he would get a million subs like Michael, but I think he could make a lot of money on YouTube for sure. For sure. And I would work, I'd probably do more than 10 K, but I would try to strictly get a position to make a good amount of money myself. that I could put it back into the show and go, that's how I would do it. Um, but, but I think hiring a host is important. I do because I think the one thing about Michael scars show that I think is great is they can kind of, keep the content flowing. Like they can kind of bounce off each other. I think you can do really great things with a host, the right host. What's up, Chris? How are you? I'm so behind in the chat, guys. I will get to you guys. I'm sorry here. Um, Gus Farachi. Yep. Probably do that at some point. The mafia no longer needs to kill people with legal prostitution, legal gambling, Killing anybody is bad. Yeah, we all know that, though. There, there's been an edict for years that uh, the mob doesn't kill people anymore. Yep, all good. Thank you. Thank you. Paulie had huge balls, and Jimmy loved him. Maybe he thinks that telling Paulie strap up and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, but he would have to have been on the street to do that, and that would have been – I think that was the problematic thing there. Um uh jam and jet uh, i watched your video you mentioned a neighbor's name uh who's your neighbor uh now i'm curious <laughs> you must have watched my frank joya video 330 people in here welcome in i hope you're enjoying the content today i really enjoyed this shot uh, so far it's been fun um i made you think a minute yeah i didn't hear i've never heard that actually uh get to the damn story I, yeah, i'm not sure what you mean we we've, we've been through the story. Um, but uh, you're welcome to leave if you want. Um, hey, War, how are you? How are you? <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, amen to that, Tom King. Don't need to be a made man to be a rat. If you're in the streets and you tell, you're a rat. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. This is an interesting comment. Jeff, do you go to a black barbershop or is that a spray on? How's that hair you rented out for photos? Wait, how's that? I don't know. I, I guess this is, yeah, okay, here we go. This is a, a, a way to slap. Uh, me first of all, uh, yes, I do go to a more urban barbershop, it's more Puerto Rican though. I live in a pretty Puerto Rican city. Um, as far as renting out for photos, I don't, yeah, I, I guess this is you, Patrick. Why don't you join the show? Nah, fake it, aim and fake profile photo. That's what you do. Thank you for watching though, appreciate it. That's actually funny. I, I don't go to a black barbershop per se, uh, but there are black barbers there, uh, mostly Spanish though. Um, what else do we have here? Gino Kid says, how do you feel about Mob Talk TV podcast? I think you're talking about Mob Talk Radio. Uh, yeah, so far as I know, Jeff and I are good. Uh, we, we've talked out a lot of things. I know we've talked about doing some things down the road. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm good with everybody. And you know, Jeff's been doing this a long time. So, uh, so I appreciate him uh, tuning in. Uh, and, and anything he says about me, I think, I think at, at, at the end of the day with, with me and Jeff uh, Canarsi is, I think we have a mutual respect for each other. You know, I, I think he genuinely respects what I do. I respect what he does. He has his own way. He does things. I have my own way. I do things. I think it's important that the good content creators have some sort of relationship. We don't have to be best friends, but I think if we all respect each other, we're all good for each other. Right? Like I've said many times before, Jeff's show helps me. My show helps Jeff and RJ and OC and Dom and all these different people. Like we all bounce off each other because I don't know if you guys know, but in my analytics, I can go and look as to what videos I'm being promoted on. And it's most of my counterparts, even people like John Panisi, all these guys, like John has an issue with me, but I respect him and appreciate him. I think, you know, he can say he doesn't care about what I do, but we all do in the end because we all help each other. I'm way behind here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's up, Joseph? Thanks for watching, brother. Means a lot. Means a lot. Sven Larsen. What's up, Sven? Denmark's here as well. We got Denmark. We got Scotland. We've got um, someone from uh, uh, the Middle East that was in here earlier. Thank you, guys. So cool to see it's inter international in here. Um, well, here's Jamaica. Mr. Reed, how are you, Jamaica? Thanks for watching, man. I love Jamaica. What a beautiful country that is. Um, what do you think about Jimmy saying he was calling the parole board? Uh, I've never heard him say that. Uh, that that would be, I would be sad if he was, but, I, but I'm not going to talk about conjecture. If he said that, that's up to him. Uh, Jam and Jeb, what do you know about Joe Zito? Uh, Joe v Zito was the former acting boss of the Genovese crime family. He was actually the interesting guy that was at the dinner where uh, the old Chinky Facciano, uh, uh, Albert Chinky Facciano, who was in his 90s, essentially told Joe Zito that if he needed someone to take out someone that he could be called upon to do it. Um, and Joe responded to him and said, essentially, you know, we'll, we'll leave that to the old guy or the younger guys. And 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 Chinky responded and said, you know, you're never retired from this. You know, it's a cold-blooded thing to say. You know, I always – I did a video recently on Joe Brewster, uh, Chinky, John Franzese. You know, these guys were in their 90s, and they're saying, look, I'm here if you need me. You know, you need me to do what I got to do, I'm here, because this is, this is something where you're never retired. And that's something about when I heard on this show, like, that was one of the reasons I created this show. Because I'm so fascinated by the notion that that oath is so powerful. It's more powerful than your family, your mother, your sister, your, your, your wife, your kids. You know, it's so powerful. Now, it's not as powerful anymore, sadly. But that word omerta, that honor, that blood oath you take, it's that important. Where like even in your 90s, you're willing to take on work because a group says to do it.
You know, I talk about this. This is why I love The Irishman. I think it's one of the best mob films ever. I know a lot of people won't agree with me because today, if a film's not two hours and you're out of it, it's too long and you can't keep it your attention. But I think anyone with a brilliant mind can understand how truly great the film is um, because it tells a pretty concise story. I know there's some things about it with Frankie Sheeran that they take creative liberty with, but the crux of the story the power that Jimmy Hoffa had, the power that Russell Buffalino, Angelo Bruno, the mob in America had in the 50s and 60s was so, so important. The story with Kennedy and being elected, and then he puts his brother in charge, and it becomes a total 180. And then at the end of the film, the, the end of the, of the Irishman is brilliant. Like the last 30 minutes, that is the true reason I started this show. Because I wanted to more, le more understand from the things that I know about the mob, what made it so powerful that, again, you're willing to betray your family, put them above, put this above your family. This notion that Frank Sheeran was okay living completely alone and ostracized because of the mafia. Look at how he had spent his last golden years. In the film, they say, Frank, who are you protecting? They're all dead. Russell and, and Jimmy and all these people. Who are you protecting? But this is a guy that was not even a made man. But he was so under the spell of the notion of the mafia that in some aspect, you have to respect that. I talk to my dad about this all the time. You know, these guys that, that literally, it's so powerful that they won't say a word about it. It's just, it's really incredible, I think. It's so interesting. Yeah, I might have to talk to you about that. There's a couple in here. Uh, there's a couple in here. Yep, I saw it, man. I, I, um, I'm, I'm not quite ready for it, but, but very, very good work. And if, if I do do it, you'll be the one that I, that I go to. Uh, 360 people in here. What up, everybody? Thank you for being here. This has been so fun so far. I really enjoy all the comments and questions. Could you imagine John Sr. doing a show if it had been the other way around, if John had ratted on Sammy and John was in Sammy's position now? Well, that have been interesting, wouldn't it? There's one thing you'd say about John Sr. Boy, did he have some personality to him, man. He definitely did. You know what's so interesting, too, about the other guys during that time? I want to shout out Mob Facts. Mob Facts finds these really interesting newsreels from like many years ago. And um, Hezekiah Films does it, too, a couple of other people. And he put up one that I saw recently of Fat Tony walking out of the court, had the big cigar in his mouth. And there's so many photographers, just like it was when Gotti would walk out. And what I found so interesting is the body language between Gotti and Salerno. Salerno didn't say one word to any reporter, not one. The only things that he said were to Vinny the Fish and the other underlings there. And the body language of Salerno was, I skeeve doing this. I hate that I have to walk out here. And why can't I just go out of the back into a car and that's it? Like Tony Salerno, you could see through to me, he was just like, this is nuts that I have to do this. And I have no interest in doing this. This is like hell for me. And when you look at John Sr., it's totally different, right? You look at like the body language and how John Sr. walks out and it's like, I love this shit. I want to talk to John Miller. I want to like laugh and smile and like, like say, you know, you need a lot, you guys need more film, you know, or you should be in church, you know, like that's so interesting, man. I love that he posted that. Cause I, I, I looked more at like the, like those old guys, like Tony ducks and Russell Buffalino and, and fat Tony, you know, the chin, you know, like the, the lengths they wanted to go to, to like prevent from being seen. Like, like I never heard Tony Salerno talk until that video. He says to Vinny the Fish at one point, why are you pushing me? Like, I guess he felt like he was being pushed back. And he goes, where's the car? That, I, I never heard him speak. Carmen Persico, I never heard him speak on camera. I heard him say like one little phrase at one point. 
and you look at John, it's totally different. That's a really interesting question. I've, I've never really thought about it. I think it'd be interesting, though, nonetheless. Can we get 400-plus people in here? We're not far away. I, obviously, I think the goal is when you have a show, if you can continue to gain people throughout, we're 50 minutes into the show, and we have 385 people in here. I love that. Thank you for watching. I'm hoping you're enjoying the show. Messina would be a massive interview, but from an overall crime perspective, I don't think they're not people. Exactly, Barry. Exactly. It doesn't matter like who you are. You know who John Gotti is, right? There's not a lot of people like that. There's just not. You know, like Junior, I think he could do it, but there's not many. That's why I think what Michael Franzese has done is pretty incredible because I've said before about Michael, what do we actually know about his mob career? Do we even know anyone in his crew? There, there was a guy, Fat, uh, Fat Larry, Iarizo. Fat Larry wasn't a made man. He got him connected with the gas business. He was a businessman. Who do we actually know? And that's what's so interesting about Michael. Are you going to do any new mob stuff in Philly? Um, not really. I, th I think we've kind of we've kind of talked enough about Philly, to be honest. I mean, what what else would you want to see? Yeah, I don't agree with that. I don't think a lot of people know who he is outside of Philadelphia. And yeah, I mean, this community, he would be big. I think, I think he would be to the same level as like, he'd probably be third or fourth. Like, I think potentially like Dom, I think Dom could get a hundred K people in here. Michael scars. I think those guys could do it. I think Joey would kind of be like in their realm, maybe a little bit bigger, but I think Joey can make a good living on YouTube. Do I think he could be that level? I don't think. I guess for me, I would sell like I'm the only one on here that is not cooperated. That's how I would sell it. Who is the mob dude that hired Bloods to kill his dad? Uh, he he was not a mob dude, uh, and he he definitely hired Bloods, but he was just the son of a, of a of, of a wealthy gangster who he was not even a gangster either. I mean, I guess he was mob connected. You're talking about uh, Anthony Zatola. Anthony Zatola was not in the mob. Um, but yeah, essentially, he, he was connected to someone that was. Uh, but yeah, you're thinking of uh, Anthony Zatola. John Garcia, was Messina really the first boss to become an informant? Uh, yes. Yes, he was. Uh, Saludos. What's up, Big Lou? How are you? Joey Molina would do numbers as a content creator. Uh, yeah, again, but... I hear people say to me all the time, you should have more views than you get. This genre is not that big. And we I've talked about that. We RJ and I talk about that all the time. And I want to, I think, believe that the genre is bigger than it is, but you know, I think people like the mob content, but it but it takes more time. Like true crime is huge. Like talking about like co-eds being killed is way bigger than what I do. Like Annie Elise, she has a huge channel. She doesn't talk about the mafia. Now, if she ever did, I think her and I could do a great duo on something. But like her content, like talking about murders and stuff, way bigger than what we do. That's why, like, I wish from the beginning I maybe would have did it a little bit bigger where we talk about mobsters, but we also talk about other things. Um, hey, how are you, Jay? What's going on, man? Uh, where is Philip Leonetti? Um, he is, uh, in witness protection. I think he would do okay. I don't, I don't think he would do, you know, numbers like, uh, you know, like those guys. I, I think, I think Phil Leonetti would probably be around 75, hundred, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're totally on par with what I agree with. All right. Uh, I was good friends with Whitey at USP2. I don't know if that's something to be proud of. Uh, if he was still alive and not sent to Hazleton to be murdered, I would try to get him on the prison phone to do a show with Rob Rosso. Um, yeah, he would do a good interview. Um, again, I, I think Whitey Bulger is just a disgusting individual, personally. Um, I think he's totally different than I think what we generally talk about. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I would want to admit that I was good friends at Whitey personally, but fair enough. Uh, <laughs> all 
All right. Uh, what does Nadu do to attract haters? All he does is tell historic mafia stories. It's not like it's a show in politics. You just don't watch. Oh, these. Yeah, but see, Dirty Mike, that's where you're wrong. There's a certain segment of people on YouTube in the mob community that have done things that I've never seen before. I've never seen people on any other genre that if they're not happy with what you do and say, they will say you made up all your viewers, you bought subs, um, you're you're a fake scam. Like I've I've never heard that anywhere, but there's a certain subset of these guys are, and I've I've talked about it before, these guys are gaudy simps that don't like that I tell the true stories of them, good and bad. They don't like that. They want someone who will kowtow and submit to them. And it's just one gaudy, and we don't know who that is. Um and I can guess Patrick's likely another person that we've seen on here before, but he's too yellow to bring his real name here. So he makes a fake name up. Um, that's all it is. You're right. Essentially, I do just tell historic mafia stories, but these people want submission. They want you to lie and change the course of history because they want that. That's the truth. It's clear and simple. We all know it. Uh, Casey Robinson, how are you? It says, what about North Fargo, North Dakota? What about uh, Fargo? Uh, it's a beautiful area, though. I'll give it that. I, I'm not sure if you're asking about mob connections there or what, but uh, no, it's just a beautiful place. I know that. Uh, Mustache Pete, my man. How are you, Armand? Good to see you, buddy. I love my Mustache Pete. He's a good, good guy. I like Mustache a lot. Uh, him and I have had some phone conversations. I got to get down and see you soon, man, at the shore. Uh, we'll have to link up at some point. Uh, Tower King, how are you? Melbourne, wow, beautiful country that is so far. Um, Leroy Brown says, sadly, are you insane? Why is that sad? Well, I'm not sure what you're referencing there, brother. Uh, I have to check out your channel, man. I've never heard that. Um, I think you're talking about why is it sad that I feel sadness for people like Jimmy? Um yeah, I, I I don't know what's hard to understand about that. Um, I mean, <laughs> I think it's, you don't find it sad that teenagers and people in their 20s make decisions and they have to live with them forever. I think that's sad because I think if, if, if you're looking at a kid that's 20 years later, he looks at himself and is sickened with his actions. I have a certain level of sadness for people like that. I do. I think people do a lot of dumb things. You know, whether it's you screw around in high school and ruin a basketball career or you you kill someone and you, 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 you know, I think that's why I think for me, it, I, have a, I have a hard time giving a life sentence without parole to someone under the age of 21. I do, because I know the kind of kid I was at that age. And I know there are kids 10 times worse than me. It's called compassion, Leroy. You should have some. You're one of these people that says, I don't think anyone should be anywhere other than prison. Now it's a slarp, strip, it's a slippery slope because you also don't want to put these people on the street if if they're uh, concerning. But do I think it's crazy that a person that goes to prison at the age of 14, 15 years old should never see the light of day again? Yeah, I do. I think that's crazy. I think that's cruel and unusual punishment personally, but it's just my opinion. It seems like you're getting a bit upset with what I'm saying. I agree. I agree. I loved it. I loved it. I think if the Irishman was made in the 90s, it would have been better. Agreed. I think it was in the wrong, the wrong generation. That's well said. Yeah, it is. It really is. Matthew Warbington says he was the boss of the Colum underboss of the Columbus. Who? Michael? No, he wasn't. That's not true. Uh, I like that picture though. Um Jeff, OC, OG Podcast, and RJ are the four I watch mostly. Every now and then I'll watch my fireside chat and the members only. What's members only? I've never I've never heard of that. Um, yeah, all those shows are good. I, I've never I've never seen members only though. Uh, what's up, Chris? How are you? Yeah, old old school guy, Joe Zito. Absolutely. If anybody would like to donate, you're welcome to send in a super chat. You can also uh, cash at me. I will uh, drop my cash app in the um, in the uh, chat box if you uh, would like to donate. Uh, it's always appreciative. So many good people in here. I love your videos. Keep up the great work. Who would you pick, Carlo or Vincent Giganti? Uh, that's like picking. Wow. 
That's like picking. Uh, I would say, wow. I would say Carlo Gambino slightly, but it's, I mean, they're both very iconic individuals in that life. Do I know anything about Joe Denty? He's a Bronx loan shark. Yes, a Genevieve's crime family. I do know something about him. To know you have a bond with someone or a group of people that transcends everything. It's very, yeah, look at sports. Look at look at sports and what people are willing to forgive. If you like the Chicago Bears, you will willingly forgive anything. I mean, you have people that will commit crimes for a sports team. It's powerful, man. And we're talking about a group that you're actually making money from. You have a group that's taking care of you, the mafia. You can understand it. And for people that live in those areas, I don't fault them at all. I don't fault most people involved in crime. I don't. I think they're born into it. It's all they know. How can you expect any of them to go any other way? It takes a lot of fortitude. And what makes it crazier is these are young men. with not a lot of resources anyway. So you can't not understand why they're so entrenched in wanting to go into that world. It's all they know. Doesn't matter if you live in Flatbush, Ozone Park, Bedford Stuyvesant, Staten Island, wherever you are in New York, South Philadelphia, Elmwood Park, Chicago, you know, um, you know, Newark, New Jersey, Cabrini Green in Chicago, wh wherever you are from, whatever you are around environment wise, whether you're Italian, Russian, Spanish, you know, black, Chinese. And you walk outside as a young kid, 10, 12 years old, your father's not around, he's addicted to drugs, or you know, he's a drunk, or he's in prison. Your mother's trying to work two, three jobs to help you. Maybe she's strung out as her herself. You look around and you say, I got nothing here. This is all I know. I'm from Flatbush. This is all I know. And you see down the street, you see, uh, or you're in Harlem, you see Rich Porter making 50000 a, a week, a day. You see Frank Matthews making millions of dollars. You live in Southwest D.C. You see Rafe Edmond making a million dollars a month. Hell, you want to go work at Kmart or McDonald's for? And that's where I say, like, I don't feel sorry for people that commit crimes and have to go to prison for it. But I also don't blame them either a lot of the time. Look, if you rob a, a old lady, like, that's just straight up thievery. I don't consider you a criminal. I consider you just a fucking scumbag. But people that are involved in high-scale organized crime, I don't necessarily blame them. I think they're products of their environment. They're an eye for an eye. Abdul, Abdul Rahman says, why would Joe Messina ever do it? He's worth millions of dollars. That is not true. I don't think Joe Messina is worth anywhere near that amount of money. Um, but yeah, I think he's made it clear he's not going to do it. Uh, yeah, we'll do something on that group at some point. Yeah, I might do that. It's a good idea, actually. <laughs> Frankie Loke looked out for me as a kid. My mother and cousin made rice balls for Gotti when he used to come to the Bronx. Anichi restaurant, Vinny Artuso's old place. Sally Botts. Man, Sally, I would love to speak to you. If you'd ever like to come on the show, I'm sure you have some great stories, man, from the neighborhood. And look, I know you're not a, guy, a wise guy as far as I know. So just, check, you know, I'll even come up and see you. We'll do a little walk around. We can, I think that'd be cool, man. We should do that. We'll go buy our two shows. And yeah, I saw a TikTok the other day, a girl, she was going around Arthur Avenue and stuff. And she went into our two shows. Um, and Sally, if you'd ever want to do that, let me know, man. I would love to come up and meet you and we can, we can walk around. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think people would like that. Have ever done anything on Anthony Zatola? Yes, I've done a video on him. I've also done some TikToks on him as well. What do I think about Frank Cali? I've done a video on Frank as well. Uh, you can uh, roll through my, uh, my my library. Michael Gum says, are there any Bananos still in the Banano family? I see a Banano is operating oil wells in Kansas. No, the Bonanno family is very much alive as far as operating oil wells. Send me an email, Michael. I'd like to hear more about that. The sit down 777 at gmail.com. Um, it could just be, you know, by chance. 
There's actually a guy that lives in the Philadelphia area. He's a distant cousin to Joey Merlino. And he's actually just a regular businessman. Um, and I think at one point he had a problem because they thought it was Joey Merlino. Um, so it could just be by chance that his name's is Barano. Uh, that, that's possible. Um, but I'd like to hear more about that. I'm amazed neither the Gemini twins will talk. Nothing would be bigger than if they did. There's numbers be off the charts if they could get someone to interview them. I would love to interview them, but um, you have to remember, we go back to the old school. They don't want to admit they are part of that. They are old school. It's one of the reasons that Vincent Bacciano hasn't written me back and Tom, Tom Patera hasn't written me back and, and all these guys that I've reached out to hoping, hey, it's better than nothing. Maybe they'll speak to me. They're not raised like that. They're never going to do it. All I'm doing is wasting my time, but I'll do it. I agree. They would make money, but those guys look at it and say, I'm good the way I am. They look at me, probably most of them would look at me as, you know, even though I don't get it because I'm not in the streets, but they look at me as the enemy, which I'm not. I'm just telling their story just like any historian would. Um, but I know they watch my content. I, th I think they watch OC Shorts, they watch RJ, they watch Jeff Canarsi, they watch all of us. Frank Fiorellino told me that Jackie DeRoss, okay, heavyweight, Colombo crime family, he used to watch, you know, or get Jerry Capiche's column every week. If you don't think these guys watch us, I know they watch us. They've contacted me through lawyers and stuff. Hey, my client saw your video. He doesn't like what he what was being portrayed as. Hey, can you take that video down? We don't like it. This guy was good to me. This guy was, I, I, I've heard it all. I've spent a lot of time in North Philadelphia. Uh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be going there very often, but uh, you're on Cambrian Weymouth. Well, I think I know why you were there. Uh, big, big earning spots. Philly and Eddie would kill it on YouTube. But what does that mean? Guys, it's very hard to kill it on YouTube. I, would he get to 100K? Probably. But I, I don't, that's, to kill it on YouTube is getting 500K, 700K, a million K. You know, that's not a million K, a million. Sonny was a huge earner and enforcer. Uh, yes, we are aware of that. I miss Frank Collada, Coffee with Collada. Yeah, he was great. He's a very interesting guy. I used to enjoy listening to him. Jeff, Sammy says he has some old heavyweight going on his show. Got any idea who it is? He said they're 90. I don't think it was a heavyweight. I think he's talking about Selwyn Rab. I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I think it was an author, possibly. I'm not sure what heavyweight would speak to him. I don't think there's any shot that's true. Um, but I, I think he's talking about a reporter, And if, if, I'm, if I'm sure. But I could be wrong. All right, uh, we'll do a couple more minutes here, guys, uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Scott O'D says, Panisi's channel is fantastic. He doesn't bullshit about anything. Um, hey, if, if that's how you feel, good for you. Uh, I'm not going to say anything. I've got a massive canvas of Sopranos, Goodfellas, Godfather. That would be cool. I'm sure it looks great. They're fucking sweet. I love canvases. Uh, let me check out how my soccer bed's doing here. Um, all right, beautiful. We already have a goal from Partick. Let's go. Nine minutes in, we already have a goal. When you have over one and a half, you feel great. Hell yeah. By the way, guys, I know this is crazy. I, I know you're probably thinking, like, what's Partick Thistle? So I bet some soccer. I bet soccer. It's what I do. Bet other things, but I bet soccer. And Partick Thistle is in the second level of Scotland, and they're looking to get to the top level of Scotland. They're playing a team that's just shipping goals right now. Partick has scored like three or more goals in like five or six straight games. They win this game. They got an opportunity to, to move on to the, to, the, to, the, to the next league. So I don't believe in long prison sentences for, for nonviolent. I, I don't know that I believe in it for like anybody under the age of 21. Falcone Transportation says, I just joined what you said earlier about Chris being part of New Springville is 100% fact. I was born and raised on Staten Island and grew up with him. Uh, I, I, I'm sure you, you did. I, Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, needs to be said. 
you know, I'm glad that maybe you could offer me something. Feel free to reach out if, if you have any good info. Joe Zito is a great man. Well, he's an old school guy. It's what they do. They're old school, tight lipped. Uh, Tatone says five dollars and fifty cents Canadian. Thank you, Tatone. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for showing love to the channel, man. I appreciate that. From the streets, always a good time. Thank you, brother. I have a cousin who's fighting a murder, an attempted murder. They're trying to try him as an adult. Um, yeah, a, a good friend of mine had a had a son that did that. Um, fifteen years old, he got uh, fifteen years, so he'll live a life. But yeah, it's 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 a very slippery slope, uh, Lou. Good stuff from Ducktown. I love it, Atlantic City. One of my favorites. Harry Ellis is Ralph Natalie talks crap. Uh, he's dead though. Let's let's let him live in peace. I've done a video on him. Here's to my love says to my bro Jeff, my brother. I love your show and I also love Jimmy. I think yes, unfortunately, killing friends is part of that life. However, there are many serious gangsters who would never have killed a friend. Like who? <laughs> I think that's really delusional. I love you. Here's to my love. We're just having a conversation here. Like who? <laughs> that's, I just don't believe that. Who Who wouldn't? Listen, if you're going to say John Gotti with Angie Ruggiero, to me, shelved is just as good as being killed. You're being banished and cannot live your life the same way. Let me tell you something. Here's to my love. There are old school guys that would kill their own family if they had to. They've done it. Look into Jimmy Brown. Look into Quiet Dom. They're under suspicion that they killed their own sons. When your son, your cousin, your friend, when they step out of line, you got to do what you got to do, brother. That is not as patently false. I don't, if you can give me an option and an idea of who you're talking about there. I don't agree at all. I'm not sure what email you're talking about. Um, but yeah, send it again, man. I'll take a look. My dad was a high school principal in a tough area. And what you said is what he told me when I was asked why kids deal drugs when I was very young. Right down to your comment about McDonald's. Yeah, it's it's very simple, Barbara. It's It's, it's sad. It's sad. Are you ever going to do something on Joe Cigars Francolino? Absolutely. Down the road, man. Oh, no problem, Barbara. Thank you for watching. Joe Mars says, do what you can to get an interview with Phil Leonetti. Uh, Yeah, I would love to. I would love to. I'd blank out his face. No. No. I have no interest in speaking to Lenny Dykstra. What would I speak to him about anyway? Uh, he, he, he says a lot of weird stuff, man. He's a little too controversial for me. Um, have ever done anything on Big Meech? Uh, no, I was thinking about having Scott on at some point, though. Scott's a, an expert in Big Meech. Any real guys who didn't inform in that life will never go on social media and acknowledge it. That's why Ray Mundy is such a joke. We're right, as well as the fact of that he was never around the mafia. That was helpful as well. Uh, Joey Test is down the street from me at Terminal Island. According to a gentleman you interviewed here from San Pedro, Joey became a jailhouse snitch. Um, yeah, I've, I know Ra Rosso said that. I've never heard that. Um, you know, that's something we would have to sort out. Uh, now, again, I I've said before, if you don't have proof of that, you shouldn't be saying it. Same thing with Gravano saying Joe Watts was a rat. If you don't have any proof, same with Jerry Capisci. Capisci put that out. If you don't have Carmen Persco, Larry McShane said he was a rat. If you don't have proof, you should not be saying that. And if Robert Ross was said that, Shame on him. If he doesn't have proof of that, he shouldn't be saying it. I know the Chicago mob is already addressed, but Marshall Caifano would be an interesting show. Yeah, guys, again, I mean, I, I don't disagree with you. I would like to do stuff like that, but guys, I put a lot of work into these videos. And, you know, I always take a page out of our friend FBS's book. And he said something one time that was very true. Guys, look, I love doing this content, but in the end, I'm about views. Okay. I do this for, passion but i also do it because i think i should earn a living off of it and sadly we can't depend on people to donate so for me it's about views and if i'd spend two hours on a subject and i get three thousand views four thousand five thousand views if i don't get ten thousand views on a video to me where i'm at on my channel it's a failure to me 
And if I'm going to spend my time doing these things, I need to make sure that the videos perform. Because for me, just like any business, if I have a, a, a business where my restaurant is, we sell seafood, right? And for months on end, we're not selling any seafood. And maybe I got to consider doing something else. You know, if I'm selling seafood in a desert location, it might not be the best option, you know, or, you know what I'm saying? Like I got to do what works. And guys, I've, I put time into those kinds of shows and they don't get watched. So, I mean, you know, I, I've said before, one of the, my favorite shows I ever did was a show I did on Seattle. Uh, if there was an organized crime mafia ring there. And I think I get three or 4,000 views. Arab. I think I'm an expert on Arab at this point. But he got 4,000 views. Is it a passion? Yes. But I can't put time into stuff, especially with... I have videos that I know will do well. So it's like, it's hard for me sometimes. Um, so, you know, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, hey, Pat, well, you're here either way. So I thank you for watching, brother. All right. Let me get down here, guys. I hit the giggles when you mentioned Partick Thistle. Fair play to you. There's people in Glasgow who don't even know who they are, and that's where they play. <laughs> I'm a weird brain, man. When I bet on sports, it's weird, man. I, I go deep. But hey, if you offer a line on it and I can win money, I'm going to bet on it. So that's how the world works. You might not know where Kennesaw State is, but in basketball, they offer lines on it. And if I see an edge, I'm going to bet it. I live my I live my life where if I'm given the option to do a show on, you know, uh, Carmine Sessa, I'm going to do it. You know, I, I think putting new stuff out there is important. Joey Frakes, as a felon, unfortunately, how do you feel about nonviolent felons getting their gun rights back? Um, so, yeah, I think once – so let's say a person commits a crime and they're 22, a felony. Do I think that they should not be able to have a weapon again, especially a nonviolent offense? Like, that's crazy to me. I think regardless of crime, if you are released from prison and you, let's say, commit a crime at 22 – I think there should be an age where you can be eligible to get like a weapon for yourself. To defend your home, I think that should be awarded to you. Now, I can understand you don't want to give someone a CCW. Fair enough. But to defend your home, I think you will have a right to do that. So I think we should make the age like 20 years after your crime, you should be able to get it back. But like, for instance, if I... Let's say at, at 23, there's a YouTuber. I'm interviewing him soon. Ian Bick is his name. He was involved with a small Ponzi scheme involving a concert venue that he had. And at 21, he was given three years in federal prison. He's a felon now. He's never allowed to own a gun again. Ian Bick did not commit a violent offense. Okay, He made a dumb mistake as a kid. And got in over his head and did some things he shouldn't do. Do I think he should not be able to own a weapon? No, I don't. I think that's crazy that he shouldn't. That's how I feel about it. Now, if you're 35 and you are a carjacker, you know, if society feels you should be released from prison, I think you should be able to protect your home. But there's, a, again, slippery slope there, you know? Hey, Johnny Mags, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're well, man. Um, yep, I answered that one already. Good to see you two times. What's up, Dees? How are you? Lazy801 says, I've been watching UK soccer for years and just now realized that there is a team called Partick Thistle, not Patrick Thistle. Doy, thanks. Uh, yes, they are Partick Thistle, a lazy eight. Yes. Thank you for donating $5. I'm glad I earned your respect today. Uh, if only all of England could see that or the all of UK could see that. Um, yes. Partick Thistle, Partick. Today they're playing Ross County. Uh, by the way, let's check in one nil. Oh, Ross County's down to 10 men. Open the floodgates, baby. Yeah. Open the floodgates. By the way, this is terrible luck for Partick's opponents. Last opponent they played, Air, 
10 men lost 5 0. Partick again down to 10 men they're facing. Open the floodgates, folks. Lefties, Alab, is that the real lefty or no? Can someone confirm that's the real lefty? Because if it's not, we're going to remove them. I know there's been some fake accounts with lefty. Uh, Christian Bartolotta, I love the hustle and content. Thank you, Christian. I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, would I ever consider Tim Dunahy as a guest? Uh, only if he'll answer my questions. Uh, Tim is 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 very ornery with that sort of thing. Um, Lenny Dykstra's off the fucking wall. Uh, yes, I've heard. I've heard that. Can someone check if that's the real lefty? What's up, Jermaine W? Thank you for watching, brother. Appreciate you. Welcome if you're new. I've never seen you here before. Glad you're enjoying the content. How about an interview with Daryl Reed from Oakland? Uh, do me a favor. Email me that. The sit down 777 at gmail.com. I don't always remember. So email me that, and I'll, I'll hopefully take a look. Miss can't be wrong. Shame on you for being late, young lady. Uh, no, we've had a good discussion. I strongly urge you to at least check out the first 20 minutes of the show. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, when is Jimmy coming on? That's kind of what I thought when I saw his thumbnail. Um, if Jimmy was coming on, it would say an interview. Uh, but it worked. You came in and watched. I hate to do that, but I'm about to getting people to watch me. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I would love to speak to Jimmy. We'll see if he comes on. Uh, Harris Payne, I'm just curious as to why you select 10K as a measurement of success of views. Does that yield a minimum amount of monetization? Uh, no, I just think when you have you know levels, you, you have to get up to a certain point. So like if you have 10,000 subs, so like Lee Cole has 10,000 subs. I think a successful video in Lee's eyes, to me, like if you can get 20% of your subs to watch your video, I think that's pretty good. Um, I have almost 40,000. So for me, I think a little bit more of myself where I'm going to try to get at least 10,000 like on a video. That's just how I look at it. I guess 5,000 would be, I guess, comparable to me. I think a little bit more of myself. And I think Lee does too. He probably hopes that if he has 10,000 subs, he wants 3,000 views on a video. Um, you know, I, I guess it's just how I look at it. Mm, yeah, I don't agree with that. <laughs> I don't agree with that at all. Uh, that is lefty. Okay. Hey, lefty, how are you? I, and I hate to do that, Lefty. I just I've noticed people have said before that they've been there've been fake accounts of yours in here. People are trying to pretend to be you and stuff. Um, so I just want to double check. Uh, thank you, Lefty. Good to see you. How are you? I uh, said so do a show on Harry the Hook. Yes, uh, that would be a decent Chicago show. I think. Um, hope all is well with you, uh, Lefty. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's important that we make sure that we're talking to the right people because uh, there are some weird. Uh, folks that that are making accounts up of people and that are that are out there. So, how can you not smash the light button? How can you? Crazy. Thank you, Pat. Brian Benevento, what's up, guy? Love your show, but this one was lackluster. Sorry. Um, hmm. Listen, Brian. Unfortunately, I'm sure you'll take this as I was bashing someone. I can't help you. If this is how you feel, I don't know if there's any talking to you, Brian. Grow up, man. <laughs> so this is what I have a problem with sometimes with this genre. I, I don't understand it. I just took an hour and 23 minutes out of my day to have a really interesting discussion about something someone said on the internet that's in this genre. And you took it as it was lackluster because you don't personally agree with it. Sometimes I'm at a loss, guys. And I, I know I shouldn't just take one person's opinion and run with that, but I mean, it is just really incredible. I, I'm, I don't know. Sometimes I get disappointed and frustrated, but you know, there's so many good people in here as well. And we had what, almost 400 people in here live. I guess that's all I can ask for. So I'm sorry you feel that way. I, I'd love for you to explain more as to what you mean by that um, and be honest. Because I have a feeling it's because you're a fan of Jimmy. And I don't think I said anything wrong. I, I think what Jimmy said was worth talking about. So I'm going to stay in front of the five or so minutes, Brian. I'd be curious to see what you mean by that. Um, maybe you can maybe you can be a little more detailed. Um, BX, what's up? How are you, man? 
we all agree, disagree with each other. Why do we have to like not like each other? I don't know. I thought I was pretty pretty kind with what I said. No, you can't. No, you can't. Who's your pick for NCAA football next year? Um, I'm going to give you my pick soon. I'm still working on everything. Um, I have a few that I, I love. Salute everyone. Yes, yeah, same to you. Jam and Jet says great content. Thank you, Jam and Jet. I will check out the replay, says Joe Root. Well, thank you, brother. Appreciate that. I don't think he's a hater. I, I just think maybe he's misunderstood. Maybe I'm not understanding what he's saying. Uh, hey, Big Tasty. Yeah, we're going to try to do one every week and every Thursday. Uh, thank you, Brandon Henderson. Thank you for that, brother. Welcome in, man. Jeff, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Just run your show as you see fit and make no apologies. Good point. You you would you would know, Miss Can't Be Wrong. You, you're definitely around and you see some of the things that uh, that go on. Um, I have it easy for the most part, but I, it's not that I'm mad. I'm just more like frustrated. Like I don't. I I thought I was like. Like, I feel like you can be, like, like super kind to someone and, and try to, like, see the good in someone. And, like, maybe you just don't completely agree with someone and, and you're, like, just having a conversation for, like, uh, you know, just to learn something. And it's like, well, I don't respect that you were me. Like, it's like, no, I didn't. I was just trying to, like, comment on something. But it is what it is. A couple more people. People are going to complain no matter what. One guy complains, but almost 400 people in here numbers. That's a good point, Tony. I shouldn't get mad over just one person. I'm not mad. It's more just frustrated. Um, and Brian, you, you've seemingly disappeared after I've asked you what your what your beef is. That's not cool. Uh, no, nah, I don't. I just more or less want to understand why certain people think these ways. Um, can I look into SNS carding? Um, yeah, as far as what? How would you deal with asshole neighbors? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I would try to kill them with kindness. Um, I would try to go through the proper channels, HOA, people like that. Um, you know, nowadays when you're dealing with, 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 you know, homeowners and stuff, you have to be very careful. Um, I think you would just try to like be kind, you know, and just try to take another tact with them. Um, I don't have any neighbors currently, knock on wood. Um, where I live, this swath of homes, the only thing I deal with is construction outside. But other than that, none of the homes are sold and it'll be a month or so till they are. So I'm just kind of enjoying the solitude. On one end of where I live, there's a model home. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I remember, you know, my own family has dealt with that. Um, it, it sucks. There's not much you can do, man. Have you heard of this guy, Joe Barone, who's a mob guy and informant? He's done a few interviews on YouTube, claims the FBI gave him permission to kill. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him. He's definitely truthful in most of the stuff he says. I, I got to look into him. That, that's that's That reminds me. I got to do that. Thank you, Mustache. A live like this, there's a chance to interact with the subscribers, and at the same time, you have a subject to talk about. This is different than pre-recorded. I like the lives. Yeah, that's true. That's why I do them. Uh, if you can hold 300 in a live, this genre is a good show. Yeah, that's true. For someone that doesn't go live ever, for the most part, I do once a week. I agree, Joey. Someone once told me you can't fight stupid. Yeah, but I don't think he's stupid. He's a pretty good commenter, Brian. He's always been pretty cool. I, I, I'm not sure what his, what his... And I'm sure people will run to Jimmy and said I was talking crap about him, which I wasn't. Jimmy knows I'm a gentleman. I don't do that sort of thing. Um well, yeah, I know why he didn't like it, but I'm I'm curious to know what what he didn't like about what I said. That 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 was more about what I said. Do you have any regrets about the new house? Um, no, I, I'm pretty happy, man. I really am. Um, you know, once you own a home, it's different. You know, you got to do what you got to do. But you know, I take more pride. You know, and it's not that I didn't take pride in my apartment, but like, you know, I have routines. You know, and I've I've maintained the routines wherever I've went. So, um. I'm just a clean person. So, I mean, you know, I dust all the time. I'm, I'm running the Roomba or the vacuum. I'm, I'm, I'm out, you know, picking up stuff, you know, and luckily, like I said, I live in an, an area where, you know, it's, there's no one really here. Um, but you know, there's just a lot of things when you move, you know, you got to make sure everything and look at another thing, Pat, it's expensive. You know, that's a regret. You know, you got to put a lot of money out, you know, you got to pay the, you know, um, 
you know, stuff up, all the stuff up front and, you know, you got to get a homeowner's policy and, 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 you know, you got to pay new things. Like it, it sucks. You know, you got to deal with the, the, the former place you live. You know, you got to, you know, there's a lot of things that you have to deal with, man. It, it, it's, it'll pass, you know, and I'm paying more, but you know, you now own something. So there's something honorable in that. Is there a way Benny Geritano could get a hold of you? Uh, yes, if Benny Geritano truly wanted to call me, he could reach out to me through capable sources uh, and I'll give him my phone number. Um, and if Al Dente, you are uh, connected to him in some way, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, the sit down 777 at gmail.com. I'm not the best with email sometimes, but I'll do my best to respond. I got to respond to Big Lou and and, and some other people. But, um, but yeah, um, the mob killed his father. Um, well, if Joe Barone's father was George Barone, I don't, George Barone was a rat. So I don't, I don't know if that's the same. I, I got to look into Barone uh, a little bit more, but from what I understand, he's, he's truthful. Uh, yo from Myr Myrtle beach, I believe is where you are. Uh, Partick Thistle update. It's one nil still. Hopefully they can break through. We just need one goal. They're down to 10 men. I'd like to get this through by half time though, if I can. The truth is, if you do dumb things in here and get caught in a lie, you lose credibility. I think Jimmy's in that predicament. Um, yeah, listen, I think if, if there was one thing Jimmy, I think, did that, that I think maybe he regrets is the Tommy Patera thing. But you know what, man? You make mistakes. I've made them. You know, I'm, I'm willing to – I don't think Jimmy should be defined by that. These vultures on here will define him through that, but I don't – I won't. You know, I, I still think he's, a, he's an interesting character for sure. I may not agree with the things he does sometimes, but I definitely am not going to hold one or two things over him. I'm pretty forgiving, I think. Uh, there's my email, Al Dante. F feel free to reach out to me, bro. Um, Lefty says, bunch of sensitive bitches respect people and their different views and conclusions as they would respect yours. People aren't going to agree on everything. Doesn't mean you got to hate. Exactly. Well, see, but in this weird genre, Lefty, there, there's a weird notion that if you talk about anyone on any level, even if it's like really concise and respectful, you're hating or talking about it. And it's like, no, like that's not what it is. Um, but all I can do is worry about myself, Lefty, you know? Um, and again, I will award this opportunity again. I would love to speak to him at any point. If he wants to come on, we could even do it in person. I have no problem speaking. To Jimmy's not too far away, so. Um, I think he's an interesting guy. Yeah, it's expensive in New York, but all right, guys, I want to thank everybody for watching today. This was super fun. These have been two straight weeks of great lives on a Thursday. We'll be back next week, same time, two o'clock on a Thursday um, live. We want to talk about whatever you guys want. We'll always bring something to the table um, and have something to, to chat about, but it's great when you guys can drive the conversation. So much participation today. Would we have 400 people in here? That's awesome. We had about 350 the whole show. Um, it got better, I think, and stronger as it went on. And thank you for being here. It's so great when we get participation, when the chat's flowing, you know, it's great. So many good people. I thank you all for it. Uh, people like, uh, you know, the, all the people that hit the like button, emails, you know, the cash apps, whatever. Um, it means uh, it means a lot to me. So thank you for for checking out the show. Um, I will see you all again soon. Remember, new episode out on Saturday, and I promise it is going to be someone in the Gambino crime family. Uh, so check that out. Go check out my latest episode on Frank Joya Lucchese crime family. Check out all my videos, folks. Check them all out. Go back four months, five months, six months, whatever. Thanks for watching. See you later.